first there. We were asking you, have you still got your teddy bear? Eamon didn't have one. I no. feel really sad. But look, never, all look, the things I know about you, and I didn't know you that. You didn't know that. Well, today. Deborah has one, and uh, Deborah says, um, the most scruffiest teddy bear going, and this one's called Bonzo. <laughs> Bonzo has been loved. He was given to me by a little girl when I was three because my mummy passed away. Oh. He was in better condition then. He's been there for many tears, hugs and stories. I've patched him up a lot and he's still here 52 years later. Oh, Giles, you, we know you love a teddy. And... I love a teddy and it's an important toy. It's the first unisex toy in the history of the world. Until the teddy bear arrived around 1904, there were toys for boys and toys for girls. Girls had dolls, boys had trains. And then the teddy bear came along and it became the first universally loved toy. And most people do keep their teddy bear and usually it tells us something if a person hasn't been able to keep their teddy bear. They didn't have one to keep. You never had a teddy bear. It explains no. everything. <laughs> Well, Tink Rush has got 12,000 of them, right? Oh. We're going to go to her home uh, now to uh, find out it's in. Tink, you are the owner of Yorkshire Teddy Rescue. A very good oh. morning to you. Morning, Lovely to Tink. see you and your collection. Um, good Tink, morning, Hi. Tink, what, what is the attraction uh, for you with teddy bears? How did your collection start? That's a really good question. Um, it started with one bear, I believe. It's hard to know really where it started, but when I was a child, I had scarlet fever and was very ill. And the next door neighbor gifted a teddy bear to me who was already very old. Uh, and that's this guy here, oh. Button Rush. And he's a, a Chilton Hug Me from the 1930s. And I've had him in my life over 60 years. And oh. uh, he's a good friend. Amor, tell us the story. You, you sadly lost your daughter five years ago. Um, and again, you do this did, yes. in, in commemoration. I see her picture behind you there. Um, all, a lot of this That's is in right. commemoration of her. Tell us more. Well, um, when you lose a child, it's beyond devastating. I always say that I'm like a jigsaw puzzle without a piece. There's a piece missing of me all the time and, and for the rest of the family who, who grieve constantly. But um, I didn't want to turn to anything. I'd seen people turn to things in the past, like drinking and, uh, you know, reliance on tablets and things, and I didn't want to do that. And so I started looking at my collection and bears that I could buy in and bears that were then donated when people knew what I was doing. So consequently, the donated bears, I repair just the same, clean and do everything as I would with my own hug. And um, I donate all the money to Ask Me UK for research in memory of my daughter, Jophie, because she died from brittle asthma. Mm. And also my son has the same condition. And how, how did that help you cope with your, your grief? I mean, obviously you're doing things for other people, you're doing things in memory of your daughter. How did it help you? I think grief is something very, um, it never goes away. I don't think you ever cope with it, actually. I think that, um, you know, I, I described it as, you wear a backpack all the time and, you know, your grief's in that backpack and you have to take that grief out and replace it with good memories because, you know, at the end of the day, Jophie will not come back. Although she's still around me, I can feel that. Um, but, you know, through reaching out to other people that have also lost people, um, you know, that's been a really, really big thing for me because there are so many people struggling, particularly now through the, the pandemic. It's been horrendous, the number of people that have been in touch, you know, through mm. the page. And they will say, you know, I'm, I've nobody at all to talk to. I can't come out. And it's mind blowing what this this last year or two has done. And so and were you, I, I were don't you think we trying, know the extent of it yet. Yeah. Were you trying to get then bears to those people, maybe people who are isolating people on their own so that they would have some form of companion, I suppose? Yeah. 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 Like well, what happened was uh, I had an antique shop, antique yeah. and collector's shop, and um, my son was very critically ill last year with uh, streptococcal pneumonia. Jazz is disabled, and, you know, this was a, a life-changing thing. We thought we may lose him. And um, so I decided that I was going to close the shop and retire. You know, I'm getting towards my mid-60s, and I thought, this is the time. And so um, I decided that I'd just go online, not as a business, but to try and, and reach out to people and also to benefit Ask Me UK. And once people realised that and they realised that I was closing the shop, we made a Facebook group page and we have about 4,000 on there. Well, you might have 4,000 on one, but this giant's brand of this is very interesting in, in your whole collection. I want here. to send a bear to your collection. I want you to come and visit mine. I noticed Tink used the word hug. 
-hmm. which is the correct word for a coll the collective yes. noun, hug. And I think that says everything about what you want with a bear. A group of bears is a hug of bears. Yes. And everything about a bear is Absolutely. positive. Yeah. And so with so much heartache, heartbreak and tragedy in your life, Tink, that you just surround yourself with these positive creatures that only bring joy to the world. Yeah. That's what a bear does. She brings a lot of them back to life. Now, Tink, That's I'm not exactly sure... exactly right. I'm, I'm not sure you could actually do anything for this off. one. This is Gail's bear, right? Yeah, Gail, is it a no, bear? No, Gail, my daughter is 11. She's totally addicted to this uh, comforter this she got when Lord. she was three years of age. Uh, he started out as Bun Bun, <laughs> but very soon his name was changed to Mankey, right? We can sort of see why. He has received major surgery over the years and no longer has any ears, feet or stomach. He's even lost an eye. Tinky, could even you do anything with that skeleton? Yes, um, I've had a, a bear recently came in from a lady that was a teacher and I've never, ever encountered a bear like it. And if she's watching, she'll know they call the bear Great Head. And he came in and he was literally a bag of stuffing, uh, but she adores him. And it took me 480 hours to get him complete. Uh, and uh, off he went. And he looked great. And he's, he's on our Facebook page. You can see him on there. I want, you, I want you in the time we've got available, tell Giles about the really collectible ones you have, the ones mm. that you may never part with. Mm. Well, for me, it's never value. I mean, Giles, I'm sure he's the same because I find the same thing amongst our Teddy collectors and people that are interac interacting with me online is that people don't look at, you know, values or anything like that. The value is in what it brings for me. I don't care how much it's worth. I've got bears in here that I bought for 20 and 30 pence. I've got bears like the one behind me, the big one, that are into multiple thousands of pounds. And, and that's fine. You know, when I was a kid, I couldn't afford them. And as I got older, I started to collect and get more and more and more. And I just see them as characters. I don't see them as value. I mean, he, Button Rush, is absolutely priceless to me. A million pounds wouldn't buy him. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's got wonky money, eyes. He's, he's he? like me. He's getting old. And... <laughs> I mean, I don't wish to be like Bargain Hunt, but I can see thousands of pounds worth there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Chiltern uh, Hug Me is now worth a lot of money because it's from the 1930s. A Steiff Bear, that was the original company that made them, made is in Germany. The big tall one The big tall one. Behind. There's another modern Steiff down here. They, they fetch thousands as well, but it's not the monetary value. Yeah. Come over to Newby Hall, not far from you, no. in Ripon, and see my bears, a mere thousand, and I'll come and visit oh, I you. I would love to. And meet your 12,000. And we might I even. I have to say, though, you might be minus a few. <laughs> well, well, we'll swap. We make a, a bear swap. You see, with bears, oh, you, bear just, you make friends. <laughs> this has been your problem. You don't know how to relate to people. Yeah. I always yeah. say I mean, to people, you, know. you can take my husband. No, but that you is, can't it is a bear. bit of an issue. It is a bit of an issue. Because actually, a, a second chance would be rather exciting for you, wouldn't it, Ruth? Well, look, listen, I think keep sending your pictures in, folks. We'd love to see more monkey bears, cuddly bears, There's lovely a lot of bears, bears, everything you've got. And Tink, <laughs> good luck to you. Good luck with your work. Um, we're glad we gave you a smile today, and thanks for giving us a smile and all that great work you do for Asthma UK in commemoration of your beautiful daughter. Thank it's you. My pleasure. No, lovely talking to you. Bless Tink you. Rush, Thank she's. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. She's the owner of Yorkshire Teddy Thank you. Rescue.